Hey, how's it going? on my Jikundo peoples. We're doing well. Today is going to be all about sport fencing. Is it like real sword fighting? Today we'll find out. Dun dun dun! Basically, it's not like real sword fighting. But it is, but it's not, it's mostly not, but it's good to know and I'm explaining why. Um, so first off, there's three different weapons when it comes to sport fencing, okay? And depending on which one you pick, will um, determine what type of uh, in what manner, if you will, you're going to practice and you're going <clears> to <throat> be executing your actions on the sword. And also, it's going to change the rules a little bit and your game plan and all that stuff. So, we're going to get into it. We're, I'm going to go by each individual sword because I've done all three. Um, but we're also going to go into overall as a whole the benefits that you will get doing sport fencing and the ways that sport fencing is not like real uh, sword fighting so something to keep in mind alright so, first is foil, okay? Foil is usually what people start on, okay? And one of the reasons that I've seen people say is because it's the lightest of all the weapons, okay? Um, a foil barely weighs anything, I don't know, like four or five hundred grams or something that so um, it's meant to be a practice version of the small sword now a small sword for those of you don't that don't know is a small self-defense weapon that you would wear back in the day but it can only thrust okay it cannot cut now for some reason Foilist insists on only being able to strike from your neck down to your torso, arms and legs not included. Okay, now I did not train, I actually did not train sport foil, I trained classical foil. Okay, and so technically that's under HEMA. But they also don't do strikes to the, to the arms, legs, or face. Um, but unlike sport fencing, you can move around anywhere you want. And they don't have the right-of-way rule. And I'm going to get into the right-of-way rule when I get to Saber. Okay, because it's kind of complicated. It's really complicated. Anyway, um, the reason why I think foil is the least best out of all of them is because there is no attacks to the hands, arms, face, and legs. And especially the most important one of those being the arm or the sword hands um, now foilers will tell you that it's more important to learn how to defend against these more uh, dangerous areas right that have your heart have your stomach and all that than to learn how to defend strikes to your hands my rebuttal is if someone strikes your hands with a sword 
you're not going to be, you know, good luck trying to defend against uh, a thrust to your heart or to your sternum, to your lungs. So, um, really the reason why I did classical foil was because the guy had graduated from Martinez de Estreza and he also taught me a couple of, uh, I was able to pick his brain and he taught me some, uh, some cool distress and stuff on the side so um i'm really grateful for all my fencing coaches but um i decided to move on from foil then we get into saber saber okay um is the fastest of all the weapons okay it's really fast um, and saber itself the real weapon of saber okay is a badass weapon all right it was used uh, in the military for many years and even today people really really like the saber but a real saber more often than not will have a curve some people argue that that's what makes it a saber. The saber that sport fencers um, use is straight. So in many ways, it's almost like a spadroon, but with a saber hilt. Um, so, except I think it's a little longer than most spadroons, so there's that. Um, depending if you get a, what type of size blade you get for your uh, fencing saber. Um, now, saber, as I said before, is a great weapon, but you run into the problem of the right of way rule, okay? And this also applies to sport fencing. And this is where it's gonna get complicated. Basically, the right of way rule is um, is intended so that uh, you um, strike first, okay, and that if you're the person on the receiving end of being hit, you have to parry and repost. Okay. The problem comes in is that these rules actually make it uh, both saber and foil less like actual swordsmanship because it it forces you to be more aggressive. Okay, and they don't care about double hits. Okay, they will be aggressive. They will try to get the first hit. And um, and if not, they'll they'll do a sloppy parry and repost, right? As long as they they hit, they don't care if, about the after blow because they followed the rules. And the person charging doesn't care if he gets hit as long as he hits first. So um, that's where it gets really complicated and very unlike actual swords fighting because in actual sword fighting you don't want that um, double hit to take place okay you want to either control the adversary's blade when you make an attack on him or you want to uh, stop hit or intercept him as he's coming in okay now this is where Epe comes in. And this is the main weapon that I uh, practice on when I did sport fencing. And I still do Epe every once in a while. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna get into the, the different reasons why. Okay, Epe does not have the right of way rule, okay? Um, now that doesn't make it perfect, but, and we're gonna get into that, but some positives about the epee. 
first off, it's the one that weighs the most. Weighs like uh, the actual sword. Uh, the practice saber does not weigh like a real saber. It's, it's going to be a lot lighter. Okay. Um, the epee and the foil actually weigh like their actual swords. Now, in epee, your entire body is a target. Okay. So, you really have to have a good game plan. You really have to have good defense. And that's what makes it more like real swordsmanship because you, defense is of priority. You, you don't want a, a, a double hit. Now, if you do get a double hit, both of you will get a point. Okay. Now, some people argue that that's no good you know that double hit should not count I think that they bring up a good point um, but at the end of the day sport fencing is a sport and it's gotten uh, it's gotten away from uh, actual sword fighting because um, it's meant for a different audience you know it's not necessarily meant for guys that are about to go out to war or have to uh, duel somebody with a sword, okay? So, now we're gonna get into both weapons as a whole, okay? Uh, or uh, the three weapons as a whole, right? I believe If you do sport fencing, your timing is going to get better. Your uh, your footwork is going to be great. Um, your ability to um, think and change your game plan is going to become better. Your point control is going to become excellent especially if you do epe because in epe we're always trying to hit that sword hands okay um so your accuracy has to be really really good you could hit the hands you could hit the bicep you could hit the the, the toe you could hit the knee um all these uh stop hits if you will to these more advanced targets okay um, is really what Bruce Lee drawed upon when he created Jeet Kune Do and the fencing influence okay of Jeet Kune Do comes a lot from Epe and in that sense all three weapons are good Obviously, I think Epe is the best, but sport fencing will help you out in those areas. Now, for the negatives of all three of them. In all three weapons, you're going to get to a point where you're going to learn flicks. Now because these weapons are practice weapons and they're very lightweight fencers or sport fencers have figured out over the years ways of bending their swords in unnatural ways and the point will curve and <clears throat> score a point and it's very difficult to defend against these flicks. Because um, like I said, they, they move in unnatural ways, ways that are not natural to a real sword. Okay, you would, sword would not work if it was that flexible, okay? So in that sense, um, all three swords are limited. And the last thing is the footwork. 
in spore fencing, you have a piste, which is an area. And now you can move a little bit within that piece, but you can't do circular movement outside of it, okay? And lastly, there is no grappling. When you get um, in close quarters range, what they would call cord cord, you can't use the checking hand, you can't uh, grapple, none of these things, okay? So there you have it, guys. Um, it's up to you if you really want to get into sport fencing after that. But if you're looking for real uh, swordsmanship, I definitely recommend um, historical European martial arts or military fencing. And uh, I'll be making more videos on those in the near future. All right, guys. Thanks for listening.